Hello and welcome to Chapter 8. Today we're going to be talking about how organizations uh, produce goods and services. And this is also known as operations management. And as you can see, operations management um, encompasses all the activities uh, managers do when they engage in producing goods and services. Okay, so it includes creating the products and the process to, to um, you know, produce them and then distributing them. After World War II, um, the United States became the most productive um, manufacturing economy in the world. And it was like that for almost 30 years until the late 70s. And that position was never threatened. But then um, starting in the early 80s, other countries such as Japan and Germany um, started competing with the United States as far as manufacturing. And uh, the bad news today is that the number of Americans employed <coughs> excuse me, in manufacturing jobs has decreased from 19 million in 1979 to 12 million today. And many of these jobs were outsourced um, to low-wage workers in, in uh, nations where there aren't uh, many labor and environmental regulations. However, the good news about manufacturing is that the U.S. still remains one of the largest uh, manufacturing countries in the world, producing 20% of global manufacturing. And another piece of good news, there's been a trend recently, uh, companies are beginning to bring back to the United States manufacturing that has been done in foreign countries. Okay, and this is uh, obviously good for our economy. And this process is called reshoring. I think that's an interesting concept. So companies that are successful, especially those that uh, produce goods and services here in the United States, um, focus on these things. You know, customer needs and quality is important. Having motivated employees that want to succeed and improve production good relationships with suppliers. Uh, that helps to, to get higher quality raw materials and components at reasonable prices. Um, High-tech, customizable manufacturing systems allow for low cost. Okay, and, and lastly, green manufacturing, conserving natural resources. So operations management is simply about taking inputs and making them into outputs. Okay, so we convert raw materials, people, finances, and information into finished products. And it's that conversion process is what operations management is all about. Um, in Chapter 1, we talked about goods and services a little bit. If you remember, we talked how goods are tangible. You can see and touch them. Services are intangible. You know, getting a haircut, um, getting legal advice going to a movie. Those are our services. Um, and some products are, are like a hybrid or combination. Think of when you buy um, a computer and you purchase a two-year warranty. The warranty is the service component. Okay, so they can be sort of a combination too. And there's been a dramatic growth of service businesses with, within the American economy. And now we're actually characterized as a service economy. And that just means that our economy is now one in which efforts devoted to the production of services more so than the production of goods. And this kind of, and, and this is in the book too, shows the differences um, between goods and services. You know, goods being tangible, you can see and touch them. You can store them in inventory. They, you can ship them. Um, they're produced independently of the customer. So all of these things, um, true about goods, are not true about services. They have to be consumed where they're provided, okay, and the customer is usually actively involved, okay, and they're consumed when they're produced, okay, and, and while service firms are different from manufacturing firms, uh, both types of businesses must compete, and they therefore conduct many of the same operations management activities. Okay, service businesses have to plan, design, execute, evaluate, improve, and redesign their services in order to meet changing customer needs. <coughs> so in 
So the steps in operations management, first we have to um, have research and development. We have to identify new ideas okay, that have the potential to result in goods and services that uh, consumers need and want. Okay, then we have to design the product. Then we have to produce it somewhere and design the production um, operation. And then we have to decide the amount that will be produced and when they're produced. Okay. So first we have to plan the product. Okay, we have to convert an idea into an actual um, product. So what's it going to look like? Where are we going to produce it? What options are going to be in the product? And we have to consider the, the concept of capacity. Capacity is the amount of products or services that an organization can produce in a given period of time. You know, there's some limit to the maximum amount of products one can make or services one can provide. So kind of think what happens if you don't plan for capacity and you have too much capacity, you know, you have idle resources, or you have too little capacity, you have demand that um, you could be meeting, but you can't because you're limited by capacity. So products are, are manufactured using one of these processes. Um, standardized products are, are identical, interchangeable, like bolts and light bulbs. Modular designs are, are things in self-contained units that you combine with other products, such as computer parts. Um, customization is sort of a made-to-order thing, like made-to-order furniture. We, um, one of our neighbors just ordered um, a couch from Italy that meant, you know, she had to go through like 50 different things and how to customize it. That would be a very um, unique customized product. Then you have to consider a location. You know, where do you want your, your facility to be located? You have to consider, you know, where are your customers and suppliers? What's the cost of labor like? Um, what are the taxes like? Um, all those sorts of things. Then you have to plan your facility layout. How are you going to produce the product? In a process layout, you have small batches of different products and they're worked on in a different operating sequence as this example shows a car repair. Okay, so it's a small batch, you're repairing one car and so you go through the various processes of wheel alignment, body work, so on and so forth. In a product layout, it's um, like a sequential layout when you're making um, a product on an assembly line. Okay, it goes through different um, operations before it becomes a final product. In a fixed position layout, you're producing a product that's too large to move. Could be an office building or a bridge. In this example, it's it's a jet. So people come and work around the, the product. Okay. And uh, nowadays, companies leverage technology to help them be more efficient and effective in producing products and services, um, especially in manufacturing. And some of you may have heard of computer-aided design or CAD, where you can design products in sort of a 3D view. And so companies don't have to take time to make prototypes and changes and more prototypes. They can design it here, thus saving um, a lot of money. In computer-aided manufacturing, um, that's where computers are used to control the manufacturing process. Okay, and if we combine those, we have computer integrated manufacturing. Okay, and this allows flexibility and quality issues uh, to be handled. Um, some facilities also utilize flexible manufacturing. This is where machines um, can make products that don't have to be retooled when they make slightly different products. It allows for continuous production thus keeping the cost low. So you can see the impact of computers and technology on the operations management um, field. Okay, then we have to manage the supply chain and by supply chain that means all the parts or parties or members of the system. Okay, so it's anything from where you purchase the materials to how you get it to the customer. 
Okay, so purchasing is the, the first um, step. You have to obtain raw materials or component parts. So purchasing has to consider price, quality, reliability, shipping costs, and those sorts of issues. Um, once you have materials, either um, you're making them or they're finished or they're raw materials, that's inventory. All that, all that is considered inventory. So vendors will you know, purchase either raw materials or components from vendors and they go into inventory. At that point, when they're needed, they go into the assembly process and then they become work in process. Those are unfinished um, products. And then when they're finished, they're called finished goods. So inventory control is the process of managing inventories to minimize inventory costs. And this includes holding costs, you know, things like having to store these things and pay insurance on them. Um, and then there's the cost of stock out. This is the cost of running out of inventory. What happens when you have an order from a customer and you don't have the materials to make the product? That has a cost on it. So companies use various uh, forms of technology, one being an MRP, Materials Requirement Planning. And this is a computer program that kind of plans the materials and the production process um, so that it minimizes the cost. And some companies also utilize Just-in-Time, or JIT. And this is where raw materials and components are brought into the production process literally just in time for them to be assembled so that uh, organizations don't have inventory laying around. Um, then we also have to be concerned with the quality of the product or service. And quality is the degree to which the good or service meets the demands and requirements of the customer. And this is a difficult thing because it depends on customers' perceptions. So perceptions are different for everybody. So it can be a difficult thing to, to measure. And especially in a service company, it's especially difficult um, because you don't have a tangible product, per se. So in service companies, um, they have to listen to customers and respond very quickly, you know, to, you know, changing needs. <coughs> Excuse me. Many companies nowadays use uh, social media to help, you know, build relationships with customers. So to manage quality, um, organizations use several things. These are some of the more common ones. Um, benchmarking is when you look at other companies and their, what they're doing and they're, if they're the best practice in that industry, you try to model that and figure out what they're doing and to do that. Um, continuous improvement is, is just a way to always be making things better and eliminating problems. I mean, any process can be made better and that's continuous all the time, looking for ways. What can we do better? How can we be more efficient? How can we be more effective? Um, then statistical process control, or SPC, is a statistical method used on a production line where dimensions of, of parts or products are charted out to see where the process is starting to get out of control. So you can stop the process and fix it before you manufacture parts that are bad. Then statistical quality control is just an overall program where all the um, aspects of the process get monitored. So to manage quality, um, it ha you have to have a customer focus because quality is all about the customer's perception. So it's about the customer. Quality has to be built throughout the entire organization, you know, even administrative departments and, you know, um, people that, that the organization deals with. That all has to be built in. Um, employees need to be empowered. We talked about decentralization. We talked about teamwork. Um, most, a lot of companies use quality circles where employees get together and solve problems. So it's a focus on prevention of errors. Okay, it's all about preventing an error and not having, not making bad parts, um, but finding it before that happens. And just a long-term commitment to continuous improvement. So it's all about building a culture 
where employees are empowered and quality is important and customers are important. So it's a culture of quality. And those are the high points for Chapter 8. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.